so i made the appointment i finally got an appointment for november 30th to see the high risk pregnancy what is the maternal fetal doctor um so i got that appointment and that appointment was on november 30th we went in they had told us that the scan was going to be about two two and a half hours which it was two and a half hours maybe a little bit longer so we went to that appointment they did everything everything looked good they checked core flow they checked like literally everything so in a mono dye pregnancy you have to be monitored by ultrasound every two weeks because of the risk so i went back for i think it was it's every two weeks after 16 weeks at that point i was only 13 weeks and what does this ultrasound say 13 weeks and five days so i made another appointment for i think i was like almost 17 weeks and then from there i was going to be seen every two weeks by my maternal fetal specialist for an ultrasound amongst other things uh so and so like girl no we did that i went back i think it was like the 23rd i i knew something was off like i woke up i obviously I didn't feel good because at this point the morning sickness was at its all-time high like i was throwing up everything i was if i didn't eat i was sick if i ate i was sick so yeah it wasn't fun but i get to that appointment and my grandma's there with my little cousin and again i just knew something was off like your mother or women's intuition you know it's 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 dead on so i watched her scan and they have like a big tv where you can see like what they're doing and as they measure like the head circumference um their arms like stuff like that it'll give you a calculation for what the baby is um what the baby is measuring it so at this point i was like 17 weeks and i noticed that baby b which is jeremiah was measuring at i think it was 15 weeks so because he was measuring at 15 weeks i and i had already done my research i had already had an idea like he has twin and twin transfusion well I, they have twin and twin transfusion so i waited for the doctor i can tell the ultrasound tech was you know she didn't talk like usually she didn't even talk like after she was done like she just was like you have to wait for the doctor he came in and he was like listen kid i hate to give you you know bad news around the holidays but you need to be seen at CHOP for, um, what is it, for twin to twin transfusion. So, if you don't know, I'm not going to go into super detail, but if you don't know about twin to twin transfusion, it can escalate pretty quickly. So, I saw them, I made an appointment for December 27th, which was like three or four days later. I went to that appointment and that was literally all day. You come in, you check in you have an ultrasound on that then you have to meet with a genetic counselor uh then you get an echo and because they're twins like everything takes twice as long then you get an echo of their hearts uh to see where they are he so and then once all of that is over then you see the doctor at the end so we were there from like seven o'clock till one o'clock we sat down touch on with me obviously we sat down and you can just tell on her face like there was something like terribly wrong like you would have thought like one of them had passed away like she just looked she was so like blah not even blah like she was pale like she didn't want and i'm not gonna say her name because not a fan but she came in and threw us for a loop because we thought we were there for a twin to twin transfusion i had prepared myself to go through fetal surgery and what was delivered to us was they don't have twin to twin transfusion that they actually have well it's called selective intrauterine growth restriction which they would not have that jeremiah had it because he had a marginal cord insertion and basically what that means is his cord 
didn't go directly like into his his belly button i guess that's where it connects and also it was on the side so he wasn't getting as much because his placenta share was very small it wasn't like in the middle where Trey's was it was on the side so he wasn't getting as much nutrients and blood flow as he needed this story is gonna get so good like so good you don't even know don't click off this video okay so there are three different types of selective intrauterine growth restriction the first one is they basically have the child the fetus has forward flow to the umbilical artery but still growth restricted growth restricted the average age of delivery would be 34 to 35 weeks which i had already been told that because i had complications i wouldn't go past 34 weeks anyway the second type is persistent absent blood flow or persistent reverse blood flow into the umbilical artery this one the average age of delivery is 26 weeks to 32 weeks gestation and then the third one is pretty much it's intermittent uh blood flow so it could be forward absent reverse like it could be a whole all three like and it could happen you know per appointment so i was scheduled for appointments like every once a week but then the average delivery for that one was 30 weeks gestation which jeremiah had intermittent um blood flow to him so i'm like okay 30 weeks like i've done my research 30 weeks is not a big deal okay then she hits me with the okie doke because I, w I didn't see that coming. I did not research this because I didn't know this was a thing. And I was told that I had twin and twin transfusion. So when she, at the end of her conversation, they, I don't even want to say it. She strongly advised that we, um, I didn't even think I was going to get emotional in this video. That we do what's called a selective cord reduction of Jeremiah which is baby B to ensure that Trey has the best baby A has the best um chance at life because your the body is amazing twins are amazing especially identical twins <laughs> because Jeremiah was not getting consistent forward blood flow that if he were to pass away in utero essentially because they're connected by arteries and veins the let's just say baby a and baby b so baby b if baby b were to pass away baby a then gets sing signals sent to him through the veins and the arteries to try to save the other twin so then what happens is all of his blood flow goes to the other twin who has already passed away <laughs> and um and that baby a which is the recipient then could have look at this hairline could have a stroke or could pass away themselves before they were able to recover from sending all their blood flow to try to save the other twin it wasn't the delivery was just so cold like it seemed like that was what she suggested even though she didn't say so i asked questions and in this case if you were to do the cord restriction because they made it seem like jeremiah had no shot like he was not going to live and we weren't preparing for two babies we were preparing for one and possibly affecting trey Funny story behind that, but I'll get into that later about their NICU stay. So I was devastated. Like I didn't even know what to say. Not so, only do you restrict the cord, so you cut off the blood flow to the other, the donor twin. And the donor twin basically um basically you have to carry the donor twin to the end of your pregnancy inside of you. And then you have to deliver the donor twin. And she said that they 
like wrap up into a cocoon in their sack and you know like they're delivered they stop growing so he would be at that point like 15 weeks gestation so she they gave us time to think about it so we left i called my mom and i was a mess mm. I would let Taishwan tell his side and how he felt, but I felt like, you know, it was stacked against me. My mom asked me, it's up to you. What do you want to do? Do you want one baby or two? And I said, I want it too. And she was like, well then we're going to fight. So forget the doctor, we'll fight. So after that, I didn't even want to be seen by CHOP anymore. But my specialist was convinced that I had twin to twin 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 to twin transfusion and not the growth restriction which he did have the growth restriction but in twin pregnancy you can develop especially with identical twins you can develop more than one complication so I saw them I was 17 weeks and like four days at that point so I went to CHOP to get a scan every single week from 17 weeks uh till from 17 weeks until 24 because after 24 weeks let me tell you at every single scan they ask you about the cord restriction every single scan at the end of the scan they ask you if you want to do the cord restriction even though you have already expressed that you were not interested in doing that every single scan they asked me about it so finally 24 weeks is valuable for a baby so we made it to 24 weeks. I was done with CHOP, you know, um, that's it. So I go back to my maternal fetal doctor at um, Virtua. And when we got there, the, f sir, what's going on? The fluid between them were so off. I think the deepest pocket for Jeremiah was like four. The deepest pocket for Trey was, I don't know, like 12. So at that point I started to, I noticed like the week coming to the doctor before we even found that out, that my stomach was tight, I was having shortness of breath, and all of that is a sign of twin to twin transfusion. So now the story is not over. It's not over. So after I got the scan, my maternal fetal specialist said you need to go back to CHOP because you have twin to twin transfusion and you need to have the surgery. The cutoff for the surgery, which not the cord occlusion, the cutoff for the fetal scopic surgery that will separate the placenta is 24 weeks. Alright, so it's 24 weeks. So we go call CHOP again, go back three days later and the, no, two, one day later it was on a Monday we went back on a Tuesday the deepest pocket for so the and when I say the deepest pocket I mean the fluid around in the sack the amniotic fluid the deepest pocket on Trey was like 14 deepest pocket on Jeremiah was I don't know it was like two two point six or something like that and then same doctor comes in and says you need fetal surgery after i've seen you guys for this long and their fluid had always been off not this drastic but it has always been off and my maternal fetal specialist has always felt that it was twin to twin transfusion so they give me the option you can either one because now everybody's optimistic you can either um just have amniotic fluid removed from the recipient twin which was Trey baby A and you would have to go back multiple times or you can do the fetal the fetal surgery and separate the veins and the arteries so that they're no longer connected which will stop the twin to twin transfusion from happening problem with this surgery is, is that again and when twins share placenta the likelihood of Jeremiah passing away baby B was very high because Trey essentially helped keep his brother alive by the connections so by 
cutting off the connections that was putting Jeremiah's life at risk, but that was the best option. Like for me and my family, I felt like that would give both of them the fighting chance was to just separate them completely. And if it was God will for Jeremiah to be born, he would be born. And that would be that. So we, next day, we got the surgery. I got the surgery. They don't put you to sleep. They just give you like, I don't know what it is, but you're still awake, you can hear. You're like numb, but you can hear. Um, they go through and separate the connections. So I went back to my room after the surgery. Surgery had went well, got an ultrasound. Both babies had heartbeats, which is amazing. Oh, amazing. They scanned 24 hours after. So I went and got scanned. Both babies had heartbeats. Fine. The fluid had stopped. And they also removed fluid, fluid from um, Jer Trey's sack. So everything looked, I mean, as good as it could. They both had heartbeats, which is great. So we came home. I was on bed rest for a week. And then I went back for my follow-up appointment which look at this which will go into my uh labor and delivery story which i'm gonna try to film but i don't know but stay tuned because it's coming and i'm very proud of myself because i did not cry even though i teared up i did not cry sweetie i did not cry that's a I'm very emotional so that was the twin pregnancy complication video